Good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome to St. Peter and St. Paul Parish Church on, well, I think it's sunny. It seems to be sunny on and off this morning. Um, for those of you that don't know me, and those of you out there, you're very welcome. You may not know me, some of you. I'm Sally Musson. I'm a licensed lay minister in the parish, and Ben Thorndike, our vicar, will be opening God's word to us later and also doing a very important baptism. We've got quite an excited church here this morning, so, and lots of youngsters here at the front, which is absolutely great. Um, so for those of you in church, for those of you who may not be familiar with the building, do please be comfortable. There's facilities at the back through the coffee lounge if you need to go out during the service. That's no problem. Um, and if you would prefer to remain seated when I invite you to stand, then again, there's no uh, right or wrong way of doing things. We're here to worship God. And that's the important thing, what comes from the heart, not whether we're standing or sitting at a precise moment. So we are in our, towards the, well, the end probably, of our, of our sermon series, Emotions and the Psalms. And today our theme is feeling insecure, God is faithful. And we will be looking later at Psalm 33. But it's particularly good to be welcoming Derek and Adeline and their family and friends here today for the baptism of Isabel, Chloe and Thea. So we're going to have, um, well, we're going to have a, a little age, age and height gradient for this baptism, which is really great to have all three of you here. So you're very welcome for your big day. So let's quieten our hearts and minds now as we come into God's presence as God's family. And then we're joined together in our opening call to worship. So let's join together now in our call to worship. And if you join in the words in the bold type. God in Christ has revealed his glory. From the rising of the sun to the setting. Give him praise, you servants of the Lord. A moment's quiet and then a short prayer. Loving God, we have come to worship you. Help us to pray to you in faith, to sing your praise with gratitude, and to listen to your word with eagerness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And there are a few notices to share together. I meant to bring to the front and always forget to wave a copy of our vision statement. If you haven't got a copy of that little booklet, then please do grab one and keep one at home and pray over it because we're now going to use it for our notices. And I, on the, in the vision statement, is inspired worship together. And that's what I hope we're having right now and what we're going to be having for the next uh, 50 minutes or so. Next Sunday, we'll be worshiping the wild on th at three o'clock in the churchyard here. It is aimed at children and young families, but all are very welcome. If you wish to join in worship outside with all ages, that would be absolutely great. Now, E, every word spoken for Jesus? Well, I'm hopefully we're doing that every day. Some of us might need a bit more help to do it than others. Starting on the 12th of October, we're running an Alpha course in person here in the parish church. And this is both for non-Christians wishing to explore their faith, and for Christians wishing to re review, renew, and go back to, to basics, perhaps. But do think of people that you might wish to invite, or if you yourselves would like to come along, then there will be invitation cards and um, um, in, in more information out very soon. And also, in terms of E, there's a quiz night here on Friday the 23rd of September, 7.30 for 7.45, and it will include a short talk on life's biggest question. But if you can get a table together to come and form um, a team at this quiz, that would be great. Six to eight people would be ideal. Um, and it's a real outreach event. So um, you, don't, you do invite your non-church going friends because it will be absolutely great for them. So do bring own drinks, but coffee and desserts will be served. There is some um, uh, leaflets at the back with further information on. And then some of you may have picked up um, on our summer reading book, Respectable Sins. And if not, I would invite you to do so. It's a, it's a good read, a challenging read. 
an encouraging read as well. And on Monday the 19th of September, 7.45, here in the Upper Lounge, um, there'll be a chance to share some thoughts about that book informally with others. You don't have to have read the whole book by then, because even if you've only read the first, well, I think I've read about five chapters, but if you've only read the first few chapters, it's really food for thought. So do give that a, a thought too. But all this will be um, a, a mentioned again in notices and other things. So any questions, you won't have remembered any of that, I'm sure, or not all of that. So do please contact the church office if something strikes a bell with you. So we're now into our summer pattern of services, which the regulars would have got a hang of, and the children will leave us later in the service after the song which follows the prayers. In the meantime, we're going to stand and sing our first hymn. And this hymn speaks of hope and forgiveness and how God's grace can change everything. And if you think that the writer of the original version was John Newton, who was originally a slave trader, but who through faith became an important influence in ending that trade, then I think that gives it a real sort of um, grounding, a real poignancy to it. So let's stand to sing. Amazing Grace.
Do please be seated. Oh, we may have sung that my chains have gone, fallen off if you ride a bike, but we still need to say we're sorry, don't we? We have those things on our hearts that uh, are really burdening us probably, that um, have happened or haven't happened this week. So, and saying sorry is not always easy. So let's just pause for a moment to search our hearts and then we will confess together. We come to God as one from whom no secrets are hidden to ask for his forgiveness and peace. So let's join together in the words of the confession on the screen. God, our Father, long-suffering and full of grace and truth, you create us from nothing and give us life. You give your faithful people new life, symbolized in the water of baptism. You do not turn your face from us, nor cast us aside. We confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbor. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. Restore us for the sake of your Son and bring us to the heavenly joy in Jesus, Jesus our Lord. Amen. So having confessed our sins, we need the assurance of God's absolution of those sins. So may the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So over to you, Ben, now for the big moment. Let me invite uh, Derek and uh, AJ to the front. Let me add my welcome uh, again to Sally's for those of you who don't know me. If, if I haven't met you, if I don't know you, do come and say hello um, at the uh, end of the service. Guys, let me get you to stand over here so you're at the microphone. No problem at all. Welcome, everybody. Isabel, Chloe, Thea, all of you are here at the front. I'm just going to have a quick chat to Derek and AJ here, and then we're going to move um, to the font. Um, lovely we made it uh, to this point. Um, just tell us a little bit briefly, Derek, AJ, um, about your uh, Christian faith. started a bit of a rocky road, actually. Um, growing up, we had a certain... I think we were taught a certain Christian faith, and then having joined St. Peter and St. Paul's, it kind of challenged those beliefs. Okay. So it kind of gave us... Thank you. Um, <laughs> room to grow and understand a bit better about Christ and about, you know, Christ's love for us and his forgiveness and how we are broken and through him we actually end up getting closer to being re repaired and fixed. And so that's kind of where our faith has kind of grown over the last, what, five, six years? Yeah. Uh, Do you want me to add something? No, you don't have to. No, no, no. It's lovely. It's a lovely so, yeah, picture. No, I was brought up in the church. I was baptized myself. I've been confirmed. Um, and then we didn't, no, no, when we moved over here, we kind of lost, church, really, we lost but our way when we moved to Tombridge, I saw a little group, Chloe at that stage was three months old, didn't really know anyone in Tombridge and thought, tiny acorns sounds good, let me give it a try. And through that, I've met some lovely ladies who run tiny acorns, which I've done subsequently with Thea, mm. um, and met some wonderful mums in the community, actually, who I'm still friends with. And from that, I started coming to church. Mm. And from there, we've grown in the family of this church oh. and our faith. And it's been lovely, and even in the few months we've known each other, it's been lovely to share some of that journey together. It's a beautiful picture of forgiveness and God's love and his sort of mending broken lives, and thank you for that. Um, but there are not just two of you, there are five of you here <laughs> at the front. Um, just tell us really briefly, why are you bringing Isabel, Chloe and Thea um, for, for baptism this morning? Well, AJ and I were both sort of brought up um, in Zimbabwe on, our, on a Christian faith basis. And for us, we want to share that with the girls um, in you know, our faith, and then hopefully our faith kind of builds and supports and helps them. And so that's why we're bringing them forward. Brilliant. 
Wonderful, wonderful. And last, let me ask you one last question. Um, you've mentioned about being part of the church family, coming along um, originally um, to the baby and toddler group. Um, just tell me, what's encouraged you over the last few years about being part of the church family here at, at St. Peter and Paul? Um, it's a very friendly um, community that's brought us in and allowed us to be a part of the church. And, you know, the kids love going upstairs. With Andy, um, the ladies do a great job in the creche, but just the people have just been so nice and welcoming and mm. to all of us, really. Yep. So it's just, just been a joy. Been welcomed with open arms is kind of quite refreshing and nice for, you know, coming from sort of a London-based background, um, it can be quite insular, whereas coming out here, it's a very open community that's been welcoming. Well, I'm glad you felt that, and we long to be, and I think we are um, a warm, welcoming church family. Thank you for sharing just a little bit more about your faith and, and, and your sort of part being part of the church family here. Should we move over to the font? We've got some water girls. This is going to be exciting. We've got some cards as well. Actually, you've got cards. This is brilliant. I'm going to stand here, and then you guys stand here. We've got some words um, for uh, mum and dad. Do, I want to, do we want to invite Rose... To, to join. So God, God parents aren't here, they're in Australia and Switzerland. We know some are uh, watching us online, but Rose, um, AJ's mother, um, is going to stand in um, uh, on behalf of the God parents with us um, this morning. So some words for us, um, some words for you guys, some words for all of us. They'll be on uh, the screens as well for us to follow. I'll let us know who's going to say what, uh, and we'll see where we land um, by the end of it. It's exciting, it's lovely to celebrate this together. So let me address us all. Um, faith is a gift of God to his people. In baptism, we give the sign of those the Lord is calling and adding to our number by faith. People of God, will you welcome Isabel, Chloe and Thea and uphold them in their new life in Christ? And we say, with the help of God, we will. Let me speak to you as parents and uh, godparents. And parents and godparents, the church receives um, Isabel, Chloe and Thea with joy. Today we are trusting for their growth in faith. Will you pray for them? Draw them by your example into the community of faith and walk with them in the way of Christ. With the help of God, we will. Baptism is a sign of these children's journey in faith. You speak for them today. Will you care for them and help them to take their place within the life and worship of the church? With, With the, the help, help of God, God, we will. Let me ask you, baptism is a sign of God calling us out of darkness into his marvellous light by faith. To follow Christ means dying to sin and rising to new life in him. Therefore, I ask you, do you reject the devil and all rebellion against God? I reject them. Do you renounce the deceit and corruption of evil? I renounce them. Do you repent of the sins that separate us from God and neighbour? I repent them. Do you turn to Christ as Saviour? I turn to Christ. Do you submit to Christ as Lord? I submit to Christ. Do you come to Christ the way, the truth and the life? I come to Christ. Water here uh, is used for baptism. It's not special water or magic water. It's just water from the tap. Uh, water is a picture on the outside of what God does on the inside of us as we trust in Jesus. God washes us clean by faith. So we thank God for the gift of water and what it symbolises of God's deliverance of his people who trust in him. And let me ask all of us here now, the congregation gathered, do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known to the world? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Right, girls. Isabel, are you going to come first, the font? 
here we go, we can do this because you are, you've got the height to get up there. So Isabel, I baptise you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Christ claims you as his own. Receive the sign of the cross. Well done. Shall I give you a little bit of water? Sorry, I've wet your hair there, Isabel. Well done. Chloe, are we on for you? Are going to stay with mummy or come to me? Stay with mummy. Yeah, I'd stay with mummy. <laughs> I'm not too scary, but Chloe, here we go. I baptise you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Christ claims you as his own. Receive the sign of the cross. Do you want to give your head a little wipe? Why don't you do that? There you go, well done. And we've just got one more, Thea. This is gonna be most fun. Are you gonna stay with Daddy? Do you wanna to go to me? No, you didn't wanna look at me earlier, but we've, at least we've got eye contact now, Thea. This is lovely. If you hold Thea over, well done, Thea. Yeah, you can touch the water, Thea, it's fine. Thea, I baptise you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Christ claims you as his own. Receive the sign of the cross. Should I give you a little towel? Would you like that? Should we do that? Look at that. Oh, I'm not f number one fan, am I, at the moment? <laughs> well done, guys. And we have some words together. We want to encourage Isabel, Chloe, and Thea. And we say together, do not be ashamed to confess the faith of Christ crucified. Fight valiantly as a disciple of Christ against sin, the world, and the devil. And remain faithful to Christ to the end of your life. Why don't we give them uh, a clap? Oh, we got a lovely smile out there. Do stay here a moment. Um, there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Isabel, Chloe, Thea, by one spirit, we are all baptised into one body. So we welcome you into the fellowship of faith. We are children of the same Heavenly Father. We welcome you. And guys, I've got some little presents for you uh, from the church. In fact, I've got, it's better than Christmas this morning. There are so many presents. There are so many presents, they've fallen off the table. There are so many presents, I had to put them on a table. We've got, for each of you here, a candle. Jesus, a reminder that Jesus is the light of the world. Um, we've got some cards for godparents for when you see them and some other bits here that I'm going to give to mum and dad. And then finally, Isabel, can I give you this gift of this beautiful book, um, Thoughts to Make Your Heart Sing, uh, Reflections on the Joy of Trusting in Jesus. Chloe, Jesus Storybook Bible, every page whispers his name. Every bit of the Bible points us to Jesus. That's a glorious Book. And then the garden, the curtain, and the cross for you, Thea. Well done. A story of all Jesus did for us. Thank you so much. It's lovely to share this with you. Lovely to have you as part of the church family. You're welcome. Why don't we give them a clap and say... Well done, all of you. And for those of you at home, we haven't got too many wet heads in the front of the church here just now, so they're, they're all looking reasonably, uh, reasonably content. So we, we've got something to give praise for, haven't we? So we're going to sing again now before we have our prayers. We're going to sing Praise is Rising. Praise is Lord. 
Do please be seated and Bob's going to come and lead our prayers. We begin today with a prayer of thanks. Thank you, Lord, for the church, for Ben, Wendy, Sally, and Andy, and the whole team in this place. We thank you for the church worldwide, some of which sadly lies in difficult places. Here in Kent, we have had a very hot summer followed recently by rain, very welcome rain. Thank you for all your goodness. Our farmers will also be very pleased, no doubt also thankful for the recent rain. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We welcome the family of Isabel, Chloe and Thea, who are with us this morning. May their baptisms prove meaningful and be a sound step into the future for all concerned. Please be with them and bless them, their family and their friends on their new journey forward. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. A real concern at present is the cost of living and increasing inflation. Fairly soon, we will have a new prime minister in this country who will immediately face key financial questions. Please grant the new prime minister wisdom and good judgment as to how both inflation and the increase in prices may best be addressed. In particular, the cost of food and the price of fuel will be challenges for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that the fighting in Ukraine may soon cease. Please help bring an end to this war which has effectively made it difficult to export grain from Odessa to countries in the Eastern Mediterranean. Some grain is being exported, but the quantity is modest. May the supply of foodstuffs be sufficient to meet the basic needs of the region. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the Queen and for her family and for the government. May the needs of the country be a priority for action, for example, in areas like health care, policing and education. As more examination results become available, may those results help students make good choices regarding their next steps though hopefully still enjoying the rest of their summer holidays. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. And we bring before you the people that we know of who have suffered illness or bereavement, some of which may be linked to the COVID pandemic. In a short period of silence, we bring their relatives before you and their friends and seek your blessings on them. Bring comfort to the people who have been bereaved. And Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, we conclude with the Lord's Prayer. So we say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, may your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, 
Forgive us our sins as we forgive those that sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours forever and forever. Amen. We are thinking today of a faithful God and we're going to sing Faithful One in just a moment now, after which the children will leave. And if I look and Andy doesn't move, then I've got it wrong. <laughs> but I think the children leave after this song. So let's stand to sing Faithful One. children now's your opportunity Andy has moved so you can move too now and Jill will come and bring our reading after which Ben will open God's word to us Jill's going the wrong way in the rush hour thank you Jill Our reading this morning is Psalm 33, Psalm 33, which can be found on page 560 in the Bibles in the Pews, 560, Psalm 33. Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make music to him on the ten-stringed lyre. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully and shout for joy. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. 
The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, their starry host by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea into jars. He puts the deep into storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people of the world revere him. For he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. The Lord foils the plans of the nations. He thwarts the purposes of the peoples. But the plans of the Lord stand firm forever. The purposes of his heart through all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he chose for his inheritance. From heaven the Lord looks down and sees all mankind. From his dwelling place he watches all who live on earth. He who forms the hearts of all, who considers everything they do. No king is saved by the size of his army. No warrior escapes by his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance. Despite all its great strength, it cannot save. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love, to deliver them from death and keep them alive in famine. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love rest upon us, O Lord, even as we put our hope in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I think we've just emptied a third or a quarter of the church uh, with the children and young people. It's great to see so many with us, especially uh, in the middle of the summer holidays. Um, for those of you who are left, I'm afraid you have me um, now this morning for the next 20 minutes or so. Uh, and we have gathered together to worship God this morning. It's what we've been doing since we started. We've worshipped God in song. We've worshipped through prayer as we've baptised Isabel, Chloe and Thea. We've gathered together to worship God this morning. If we were at church in another part of the world, I'd say that and there'd be a resounding amen. Praise the Lord from the congregation. It was a joy uh, for me to pray with Bishop Given from Tanzania last week. There were some great praise the Lords uh, in our prayer time together. We have gathered together to worship God this morning. It's a chance, Psalm 33 verse 1, to sing joyfully to the Lord. Verse 2, to praise the Lord. Verse 3, to sing to him a new song and shout for joy. It's the heading on the next slide. Psalm 33, verses 1 to 3, are called to rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. But let me ask you, how are you feeling? Perhaps you're here this morning wrestling with things. You want to cry out, why? Health issues, job concerns. Relationship breakdown, the cost of living, the war in Ukraine. Perhaps they're making you feel insecure about life, whether or not you believe in God. We moved to Tunbridge a few months ago from Crowborough, leaving behind friendships, schools, relationships in the church where we'd served the gospel over years together. We, we've been well loved in Tunbridge by so many people already, but it's still a time of unsettledness. Where do we look for security in life? The things we build round ourselves, jobs and careers, pension pots and savings, family and friends, and how do we feel when those things fall away or are absent? It's often said that suffering either draws people closer to God or drives them away. Perhaps you're here this morning feeling insecure for today, tomorrow, next week. Perhaps for life and death, you know, the big stuff we don't often think about. This Psalm 33 is an encouragement for us to praise God, to rejoice in the Lord, even when our circumstances make us not want to do that. 
This psalm is an encouragement for us to rejoice in the Lord, even when our circumstances make us not want to do that. Psalm 33 presents to us God as an anchor in life. Picture an oil rig in the ocean, buffeted about by the waves, and yet it's anchored, steadfast and firm. The psalmist presents God to us as that anchor, keeping us steadfast and firm, even as the waves of life buffet us around. And the psalmist is going through his own hard times, verse 19, close to death, a time of famine, we sang in our opening song, When Sorrows Like Sea Billows Roll, that was um, uh, pre-service. Uh, the psalmist knows those sorrows, so as we may well know in our lives. And yet this psalm presents God to us as an anchor in life, immovable and unchanging. We can spend lots of time looking at the waves, which can be really scary. Well, this psalm encourages us to look to God and in turn, turn to praise him, to rejoice in the Lord, even when our circumstances make us not want to do that. Do uh, have your Bibles open at Psalm 33, if you haven't already, page 560. That will help us. Uh, we'll have in front of us now the words of someone in trouble who knows they need to wait, to trust and hope. But someone who knows enough about God to know that trusting God in hard times isn't a wasted hope. Far from it, because of who God is. What a blessing, what a privilege to be able to sing this song in hard times through suffering and struggle, when our securities fall away and we're feeling insecure, when otherwise we might look at life and just not know what we can do. It is the blessing, that the privilege of the one who believes in God, that we can sing this song at all times because of who our God is. What a blessing for Christian believers now. And isn't that a security we all want in, in the mess and the brokenness of life? As one preacher notes, following God in a broken world is possible. Take heart. Why don't I pray uh, before we look at these verses? Father God, we thank you for your word to us. We pray that your spirit might take this word, plant it deep in our hearts, and grow in us the fruit of faith, a trust in the risen and reigning Lord Jesus. Amen. Psalm 33, verses 1 to 3, a call to rejoice in the Lord, to be anchored in God because of who he is. We can trust the God of the Bible, even when the circumstances of life make us not want to do that. Three reasons why we're going to see from this psalm. Next heading, first, verses 4 to 9, rejoice in the Lord, trust the word of our creator. Trust the word of our creator. Do you know how many times I have to say something at home for it to happen? Any parents out here, now you're aware of the endless repetition. It's true for parents, it's for, for teachers, for line managers at work. Our words don't really have any power to make things happen. I wonder if we can show the picture on the next slide. Um, can you see? I hope you can see. There should be a pale blue dot uh, in that picture. Maybe let's flick to the next one, Jeremy. Maybe that helps. The red circle's mine. And the pale blue dot's actually in the photograph. A bright blue pixel in the vastness of space, originally taken 30 years ago as NASA's Voyager 1 sped out of the solar system, looking back on itself, and that pale blue dot is Earth. Scientist Carl Sagan famously wrote of that pale blue dot, that's here. That's home, that's us. On it, everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you ever heard of, every human being who ever was lived out their lives. It's mind blowing. And then we read Psalm 33 verse six and our minds are blown even more by the word of God where the heavens made the starry host by the breath of his mouth. I have trouble getting my children mobilized and moving with my words, and yet that dot, that planet, that solar system, the galaxies, the whole universe created by a word, a, a breath, a single will of the creator God. 
the vast oceans that actually scare me, and they're a picture of chaos in the Bible. God plays with them. Verse 7, he stacks them up into heaps. He, he puts them in place, as I might rearrange my papers here on the lectern. Verse 9, God spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. This is the creator God. To be revered, verse 8, held in awe, whose word created all of creation. And the psalmist tells us we can trust the word of God. Trust the word of our creator. Verses 4 and 5, God's word is right and true. It is full of justice and love. Every word God speaks, words powerful enough to create all of creation, are perfect. And they speak of his unfailing love. With a word of creation, God has lavished his love on us. One preacher puts it like this, the sunrise in the morning, God's saying, I love you. The bees buzzing, God's saying, I love you. We can trust the word of our creator, a powerful word, full of truth, full of love. The word of God does the work of God. They are inseparable. God works perfectly through his perfect word. And what does God's word tell us when the waves bash us around, when life makes us feel insecure? Jesus says in Matthew 28, 20, to those who trust in him, I am with you always. Jesus also says to them in John 16, 33, in me you may have peace. In the world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Come to me, Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, Jesus says, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And Jesus says again in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. When the waves bash us around, when life makes us feel insecure, the Christian joy and hope is that God tells us in the person of Jesus, I am with you. In me you will find peace and rest for weary, troubled souls. I will give you all you need to keep going, to press on to the end. To that day when, in Jesus' words again, Revelation 21, 4, there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain ever again. Though that isn't our experience at the moment. I don't know um, if you play Risk at all, uh, a game of world domination. That's the marketing strap line. So uh, we set it out like this. I play. I throw the dice. I take your territory. Uh, I make advances. But then you have a go and you take my territory back. You fight back and we keep going and we take back from one another. Or, or, or you might just sit on the battle line in Ukraine at the moment. You see it firsthand there. Or, or gang wars in cities. I, I don't know at all whether it was gang related or not, but we had a terrible murder in our town. Not far from here this week. Or the political shenanigans of Indy Ref 2 in Scotland, or out on the campaign trails with our potential prime ministerial candidates. The world is unsettled. It is insecure. The balance of power swings back and forth. Sometimes the implications economically socially, humanitarianly, they impact hundreds and thousands of people. But Psalm 33 is a call to rejoice in the Lord, to be anchored in God because of who he is. We can trust the God of the Bible, even when circumstances make us not want to do that. First, trust the word of our creator. The second reason, next slide, next heading, verses 10 to 17, trust the work of our sovereign king. Trust the work of our sovereign king. If we've just seen creation's joyful obedience to the word of God, these next verses, one writer notes, show us humanity's blatant defiance. The world is unsettled, it's insecure. The balance of power swings back and forth. There is plotting and planning, verse 10. And here the writers probably picking up plans that stand against God. Philosophies designed to undermine God, 
to write God out of the equation altogether. What we might call a Disney theology, where where being true to ourselves is what really counts. Or, Or where God is acknowledged in our culture to rewrite God as we want him to be. That we can have Jesus as saviour, but not as Lord, diluting the gospel. Where sin and our need for forgiveness are removed, replaced only with the language of God's love. Where Jesus' uniqueness in offering that forgiveness is removed, leaving lots of different ways to have a relationship with God. Where the call to live transformed lives as God's people is removed, so we can live our lives however we want. They don't have to change at all. God blesses everything. Proverbs 19, 21, many are the plans in a person's heart, but it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. We'll just look at verses 10 and 11 here, Psalm 33, the Lord foils the plans of the nations. He thwarts the purposes of the peoples, but the plans of the Lord stand firm forever, the purposes of his heart through all generations. The writer goes on, the Lord looks down, he watches, he considers everything people do. The plans we make, the things we put our hope in for peace and security, things that can't ultimately bring either. And don't we know that's true? The things we put our hope and security in pass and fade. People let us down. The markets fail. Beauty fades. We can't control sickness and health. But God is over all and in control of all. God is the sovereign king. The writer contrasts two sets of plans here, ours and God's. We who live on one dot of the pale blue dot at one tiny moment in history and the plans of the eternal God who made the pale blue dot with a word. Trust the work of our sovereign king. His plans cannot be foiled. He will continue his work by whatever means he chooses. Plans which are ultimately for his glory and for the good of his people, for all who trust in Jesus. And I'm so pleased about that. So blessed as a Christian, verse 12, that this God is my God, not by any work of my own, but a free gift of forgiveness and eternal life received because of what Jesus did for me. This is my God. And that's the reason I sleep peacefully at night. And it's the reason I'm not racked with anxiety over all I can't control. And it's the reason I'm not caught up in anger with all I think is unjust in my life and the world. Why I'm not restless in trying to manipulate things to achieve my own plans for what I think is best. Of course, none of us are impervious to those things. But as a Christian, I can take the psalmist's call to rejoice in the Lord, trusting the work of my sovereign king, the one with perfect knowledge, verse 13, perfect control, verse 11, perfect justice, verse 16, the assurance that one day all the broken things in the world will be set straight, and the one with perfect love. Psalm 33 is a call to rejoice in the Lord, to be anchored in God because of who he is. We can trust the God of the Bible even when circumstances make us not want to do that. First, trust the word of our creator. Secondly, trust the work of our sovereign king. And third and finally, verses 18 to 22, trust the love of our rescuer. Trust the love of our rescuer. That's the final heading on the handout. God's perfect love. The best we get to understand love in the way God loves us, I'm convinced, is in the wedding service. Declarations to love, comfort, honour and protect, forsaking all others, faithful as long as we both live. Vows to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till death us do part. Those promises, those declarations and vows, they're not promises to love as long as we feel in love. But they're promises to love in spite of the times we don't feel in love. They're a commitment to love. Self-sacrificing, other-person-focused love. Which sit in contrast to our popular culture and its self-absorbed love. 
YOLO, you only live once. A license for self-love. Disney theology, be true to yourself. Be your best self. Now, there is some truth in that, but it's not found where TikTok and Instagram would like us to believe. God's perfect love and unfailing love, verses 18 and 22. Other person focused. God commits himself to his people. He is their help. He is their shield. He is their hope. The unfailing God, who is verse 18, alert to danger, and verse 19, sensitive to need. It's a love that will never disappoint us. The Apostle Paul writes in Romans 5, 5, that this hope, this sure and certain hope found in the Lord Jesus, of God's rescue from our sin and, and restoration to a right relationship with him, we heard Derek speak something of that earlier, does not disappoint us. Romans 5, 5, it does not disappoint us. Trusting in Jesus, God offers to rescue us, to be our rescuer, to deliver us, verse 19, even from death itself, because Jesus died for us. The gift of eternal life found in our rescuer. It's hard for us, though, to see that God is always loving. We, we sometimes find it hard to see or comprehend that he has our best interests at heart, really. Really? But if we doubt it, look back to the cross of Christ, where God's love was revealed in all its breadth and depth, dying in our place to bring us back to God, our creator, our sovereign king, our rescuer. And it's through Jesus' cross that one day all the struggle and suffering will be over. The brokenness of our lives and the world one day fixed forever. And it's a love we can begin to enjoy today. Rejoicing in the Lord can begin today. Focus on the Lord and his unfailing love to us supremely through the cross of Christ. Trust in the love of our rescuer, or as verse 22 puts it, put our hope in him. It is possible to find unfailing love in a way that anchors us for life. The security not found in people, family, jobs, or circumstances, but in God. And all he offers us in Jesus. This psalm wants us to be anchored in God's unfailing love. Trust the love of our rescuer. Present help and future hope. Rejoice in the Lord. As Christians, we can. Because joy in God is deeper than our circumstances. And in fact, struggle and suffering can draw us to God and give us a joyful confidence in him. Eyes on our creator, our sovereign king, our rescuer. So are you feeling insecure? In God we find true security. Rejoice in the Lord. Trust in the work of our, the word of our creator, the work of our sovereign king, the love of our rescuer. And as we finish now, just one plug for those who don't yet know the joy of knowing Jesus. We will soon be running, you heard it earlier, an Alpha course across our churches starting on the 12th of October. A chance to explore some of the basics of Christianity. Who is Jesus? Why did he come? What's it mean to follow him? We'd love you to join us. And if you're a Christian here who wants to go back over some of the basics, as we all need, then do come and join us too. All those details are from the church office. As the storms of life come and go, will we be rooted in the anchor that's Jesus? Hold loosely to the things of this earth. Stand firm on Jesus. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that we can find security in you, that we can rejoice in you, our creator, our sovereign king, our rescuer. And when we especially feel battered and blown about by life, help us turn to you, whether for the first time today or afresh this morning. And as we do that, as we turn and trust in you, in Jesus, may we know the blessings of all you offer us as your people, a confidence in your word, your work and your love for us. Draw close to us as we draw close to you. And cause our hearts to overflow with eternal rejoicing.
whatever we are facing and will face this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Gosh, we sure do need that anchor, don't we, in the unstable world today. And it's great to know that God is our rescuer and his love is unfailing and we need to keep coming back to God. So let's sing about that now. My hope is built on nothing less. Let's stand to sing. Please be seated. We all finished well in the end, didn't we? That's great. We don't, as you know, pass a collection plate around these days, but there is a plate in the foyer um, if you wish to give in that way, and there's a card reader there too. And I'd just like to thank everyone who's been involved in the service. Those of us you can see are obvious, but there's lots goes on behind the scenes in preparing for a service. But most of all, thank you all for coming. And thank you out there for joining us as well. It's nearly time for you folk out there to put the kettle on. But the rest of you can stay and have coffee here. You'd be very welcome to do so. So let's just have a prayer of thanksgiving. We thank you, Father, for the many blessings you give us, however undeserved. We also give thanks and praise for all those who give so generously of their time and resources in your service in this parish and further afield. This week, thanks we give in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So I say, do feel free to stay for fellowship and coffee. Um, and if you would like a prayer, um, someone to pray with you either today or during the week, or know someone that would or like a visit, then do please see Ben or myself after the service. But as Ben said, do make yourself known to us as well. So before the final prayer and blessing, let's join together in a closing prayer. The words will be on the screen. 
eternal God, our beginning and our end, accompany us on this day's journey. Dawn on our darkness. Open our eyes to praise you for your creation and to see the work you set before us today. Take us and use us to bring to others the new life you give in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so may the God of peace himself give us peace at all times and in every way. And the Lord be with us all. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all. Those we love, those we pray for, now and always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>